Uh, it's 5.30 or so, maybe 5.35. And this is for the status update on the, um, on the Hagania Master Plan as prepared by the Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. And in accordance with the open government law, notices of this status update were sent to all main media outlets, all senators and stakeholders five days in advance on April 20th, and a second notice was sent on April 23rd, 2015. Now, I want to open this um, status hearing by saying that we scheduled this uh, weeks in advance, and it was because um, the Higanya Redevelopment and Restoration Authority uh, wanted to have individual meetings with um, senators, uh, and it was then decided that for the first meeting, uh, it would be more prudent if um, we did this in this kind of um, setting. Uh, we're not only uh, are you able to present this to members of the legislature, but in particular, you would be able to present this to members of the public because we are uh, televised uh, live. And so I like to uh, recognize the vice chair of this committee, Senator uh, Tom Atta. Thank him for being here. I'd like to recognize Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz. Thank him as well. And our minority leader, uh, Senator Tony Atta, thank you for being here. I will start by recognizing uh, Mr. John Cavo for some opening uh, and introductory statements, and then you can uh, recognize the entity that will give the presentation. And please also recognize um, uh, members of the HRA uh, board that are here this evening. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Respicio, uh, and uh, Vice Speaker, Vice Chair, Senator Atta. Uh, we are, uh, I'd like to, uh, my name is John Calvo. I'm the Chairman of the Ganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, and um, Along with me, uh, with the Board of Commissioners, including the Board of Commissioners, are uh, Zenon Bellinger, Vanessa Williams, John A. Cruz, the Mayor of Agania, of Agania uh, Rob Lemtiaco, Greg D. Perez, and of course, uh, Senator Respicio uh, also is, uh, sits on our board. Uh, Ex-official members are include uh, D uh, Gov Guam uh, agencies, uh, example, DPW, DPR, DLM, etc. The, the uh, HRA staff includes uh, Joseph Arturo Cameron, Executive Director, and Joseph Santos, Senior Planner. <clears throat> we are happy to be here tonight to give this esteemed committee on Capital District a status update of the Agania, Agania Master Plan prepared by the Agania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. An act to create the Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority was passed into law December 1st, 1997 by the 24th Guam Legislature. With almost 18 years passed, you will see tonight that we are getting closer to accomplishing the law's initial task of implementing the Hagania Master Plan. In June 2013, the 32nd Guam Legislature passed Public Law 32-039, which added two commissioners, the Hagania Mayor and uh, an appointee from the Guam Legislature. At, that, at, at the time, this action gave the authority great encouragement and support, as this undertaking can only be accomplished with full collaboration by all parties concerned. This is why HRA's appearance here tonight is not just a status update, but also to hear and gather input, issues, and concerns from the esteemed body. I must also commend Senator Respicio as a fellow HRA board member for his invaluable contribution and drive to implement this master plan. It is also my opinion that he has represented this body to the highest degree. Thank you. I also be remiss, be remiss if I did not acknowledge the foresight of the following. The Governor of Guam, the 32nd and 33rd Guam Legislature, Guam Visitors Bureau, the Guam Economic and Development Administration for locating the Guam Museum in that capital district, hosting the second annual Guam International Music Festival and 12th Annual Festival of Pacific Arts in our capital city of Agania. Agania is clearly becoming the focal point of culture, government, and commerce. It has begun. Recently, someone pointed out to me the differences of meaning between the two spellings of the word capital, with an O and a capital with an A. Capital and O defines a building or group of buildings where the legislative deliberating body meets. Capital with an A defines the city serving the seat of government. Furthermore, it is important that we establish the word capital as not only our seat of government in Guam, but also as a center of cultural, 
historical sense of place, and Guam-centric learning. Our capital contains such iconic structures like the Dulce Nombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica, the Plaza de España Arches, soon to be renovated Con Guam Congress Session Hall, the Gatnia Spanish Bridge, and soon to be completed Guam Museum. We hope to add to that list the iconic Palacio and Plaza de España. In our discussion with stakeholders, there is overwhelming, overwhelming support to restore and rebuild the Palacio historic site. These two historic sites are not a new endeavor, but long-standing efforts going back to 1980, one led by our standing congresswoman as the first lady. Ne nevertheless, I cannot overemphasize any more how important it is for us to implement the Aganya Master Plan. We need to reestablish our capital and elevate it to its deserving prominence in the region and world. Our capital city of Aganya is the epicenter of Guam and Chamorro culture, and it, has risk, it is at risk of being lost to future generations if we do not succeed. HRRA is not approaching this plan haphazardly, but will ultimately present the best and highest use of possible with the limited space we have available. Make no mistake, HRRA will pursue the vision of the greater good of the people of Guam. At this time, let me introduce uh, HRRA's consulting team, Matrix Design Group, and I would like to introduce Celeste Warner to continue the presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, Ms. Warner, before you um, begin your presentation, uh, I just want to point out something that uh, Chairman Cavill said that I want to underscore that we're not approving anything tonight, that this is um, like an update that you're providing to the legislature as stakeholders of this uh, this Hakanya revitalization. <laughs> so I want to thank um, uh, Mr. Cavill for pointing that out, that, that some at some point in this process, there would be a plan that would be presented uh, to the legislature, I imagine, uh, from the governor that we would um, we would have to adopt, correct? Okay. So we're not going to be approving anything tonight. We're going to hear from you, and uh, any input that we have is always welcome. Okay, thank you. You may begin your presentation. Let me recognize Senator Underwood and thank her also. Thank you. Um, honorable Chair and Vice Chair, Vice Speaker, and Senators, I'm Celeste Warner, and on behalf of Matrix Design Group, and uh, HRRA, we're very excited to have the opportunity to provide you an update this evening on the master plan process or project for the Hagatnya um, area. Um, we have our team is here, just a portion of our team. As you'll see their names here, the deputy project manager, Rick Rust. Uh, we have our engineer lead, Mike Rapla, Tria Polino, who's our planning research analyst, and um, Dan Baruch. We have many other specialists and technical experts that are assisting us as we move forward. Next. So the purpose of our meeting this evening, as the chairman, um, Chair Chairman Calvo stated, is to uh, twofold is to present you the update on what we've been doing. We're in our initial stages of the process, of the planning process, so we're excited to have the opportunity to um, get your input. So this, this evening, we're here to obtain your input and your, your ideas. You are a major stakeholder in the overall development of this um, plan. Um, we are also here to provide you an update on what we've heard from all of the different uh, stakeholders that we've had the opportunity to meet with, talk with, and uh, hear their great ideas as well. So, as far as the overall project, so the master plan, interestingly enough, a master plan, as you probably all well know, is, is really like a blueprint, a blueprint of how a community should development or shall develop in the future. It is the, the roadmap for development. It represents the community and the people's vision, the government, the political and elected and appointed officials, what their vision is and what they would like to see within Hagatnya. And the master plan update specifically for Hagatnya is a long-term plan. It's a plan that goes through 2030. So it, uh, it's not an immediate short-term plan. The overall process has seven different steps to it. As you can see here with the blue arrows, we're in, pr in the process of basically step two and step three. We're um, continuing to collect data 
of existing conditions and we're assessing the data and we're collecting the issues and opportunities. And as I stated before, one of the most important parts is to get your input. So we'd like to hear what your thoughts are as far as the opportunities and what your vision is, what the issues are that you may believe within the Haganya area. This process is a dynamic process. It will continue to evolve as we go forward. And ultimately, this master plan will be a living document. Um, from here, we'll then go into steps four through seven, where we're gonna be developing the goals and the policies of the plan, as well as the, the regulatory framework that supports the, the overall plan. Ultimately, as uh, Chairman Respicio stated, uh, he, it is, uh, a, a point that we would be coming back to all of you as a public hearing to get approval for the master plan. So how long is the master plan going to take? It's about a year and a half process. As you can see here, we're going through and we're into the second box from the bottom left. Um, we're in mid-2015. And as we move forward from today and we get your input, uh, we and take into consider er, into account all of the other stakeholders' input, and the public as well. We'll move forward with documenting the existing conditions and what we call a map atlas, and we'll be developing land use alternatives. Um, ultimately, we'll go through and uh, in hopes that we, everything stays on schedule, we should complete it in, or this project in early 2016. So as we move forward, we are going to definitely take what all the, all the hard work that has gone into developing um, the 2005 draft I Got You Master Plan. And uh, we're going to build from what was uh, developed during the 2005, as well as the existing master plan. And a lot has happened. So since then, we're incorporating all of the different projects and the evolution of the uh, progress that has been made here in the Hagatnia area, and we're going to incorporate that into the uh, overall update 2030 Hagatnia master plan that we're doing currently. A master plan has a land use plan, and in most cases, many people believe that a master plan is just what you see here, a geographic um, area map that uh, delineates and identifies where what kind of land uses should be where where, where should they be located um, it's important to the people who own property here what is how is it going to impact me and um, how, how am I going to go forward and develop my land it's important to all of you as, a, as the head of the legislature you also have authority over a lot of land within the capital um, city of Hagatnya. And so it's, it's, we look at the different uses, the compatibility, the mix of uses, and what makes sense. We make sure that we try to achieve a jobs to housing balance to re-infuse more residential within the community. But the master plan is more than just a land use map. It also is a set of policies and guidelines. So this master plan, or the project that we're working on for all of you, and for the people of Guam, it's more than just the land use plan and policies. The difference between the 2005 um, master plan update that was going through the draft process and this project is that we're also responsible for developing um, the regulatory uh, framework that will assist in implementing the plan. And the regulatory framework includes the zoning code. So it'll be codified to make sure the development goes forward in the manner that's laid out in the land use plan. In addition to that, the additional component that's part of this master plan is also what we call a financing implement implementation plan. The, fi the financial plan will also provide, and what we're going to be looking at is developing a set of um, revenue uh, items and venues and methods to there you'll have continued sustainability to not only implement what's in the master plan but to sustain it for maintenance and operation throughout the community as the uh, overall um, input into the plan you keep hearing us talk about your your input is important the stakeholders that we've already talked to but as well as the public so public participation is um, infused throughout the entire process and right now we encourage all of you and all of the uh, the uh, citizens of Guam to go and visit to the website we have a project website 
as you can see here, www.hakantyamasterplan.com. That will provide you updates as we continue to go through the process and uh, when the upcoming public workshop will be held. Um, throughout the process, we're going to be developing several fact sheets. The fact sheets, you'll, there's, you'll, you'll have one, uh, or you do have one in front of you. That's the initial fact sheet number one. It gives you an overview of what the project's about, why it's important to go forward with the project and the process and, and uh, in the inputs throughout. We already held a very important uh, component of the public participation process, and that was a stakeholder workshop, and we'll get into a little bit of details on that as I move forward. And we do have a future public workshop coming up in uh, late, late summer. So let us give you a little bit of um, a background of the existing conditions. And so we've, we've been going through a very intensive uh, data collection and assessment of existing conditions. It's uh, critical to make sure that we denote that data for existing con conditions is truly a snapshot in time. That as we are collecting this data, things are changing and they will change. So as we go through the entire process, the one and a half years, what we may have collected at the time that we're in this mode here, this phase here, may have changed by the time we end. So it just provides us that the, the data is a comprehensive set of information that is used to measure progress as we move forward. And also it helps all of you and other decision makers to make informed decisions. And so we're in the, what we would call the discovery mode, this discovery stage right now. <clears throat> These are just examples of some of the items or topics that we have uh, addressed and we're assessing as we go through the existing conditions. You'll see that there's four different topics from community development, public facilities, environment, and mobility and transportation. We look at infrastructure. We look at natural and man-made hazards. We look at the existing zoning and the existing land use that currently exist and a number of other um, topics and items that you see here. So let us give you the um, input that we, or an overview of the input that we've received so far from all the different stakeholders that we have met with. Um, we had the opportunity and the privilege to conduct 31 individual one-on-one -on -one, um, interviews with key stakeholders. Those key stakeholders are comprised of um, people who own businesses within Hagatnya, property owners who live in Hagatnya, residents of Hagatnya. Um, the key uh, other key stakeholders that uh, visit the Hagatnya and the tourism industry and the real estate industry, and the list goes on. Um, we, ha we held over 31 in interviews and a total of 55 different people were interviewed in those 31 interviews. We also had the opportunity to hold a two-day workshop, as I stated before, in late February that provided an immense amount of input from a number of different uh, people and stakeholders. Today, we're here to continue the, our um, discovery and get input from all of you, as well as um, the ongoing input from the HRRA board, the master plan subcommittee, as Chairman Calvo stated earlier, as well as continued technical assistance through our um, expertise of doing a number, multiple number of these for many, many years. It's been a very collaborative process. The two-day workshop that was held in the end of February, as you can see through some of these um, photographs here, was very intense. Um, we want to thank everybody who participated in that. They took a lot of their time, and they provided a lot of great ideas and uh, generated some good dialogue and healthy discussion amongst all of the participants. You'll see that it was hands-on. We had the opportunity to not only identify the issues and opportunities, but also to get pen to paper and really uh, understand what their vision was. What we went through was not land use alternatives. What we went through was an exercise that we called conceptual visioning, to have them put down, or put down on paper what they thought as far as what the vision would be for Hagatnya and for the island of, uh, for the, island of, uh, of the area. Um, the input, the workshop uh, input, as you can see here, I'll go through some of the, uh, highlight some of the key items that we heard. They, we heard 
almost from every single participant that it was really important to preserve Plaza de España and all of the other cultural, very important cultural um, landmarks and the cultural uh, Chamorro uh, points or culture to the people here. So wherever possible to incorporate that through the design and land use plan, the policies as well as regulatory. To establish Hagatnya as the capital city of the island, but also to uh, provide provide the uh, area to be the heart of the government, of uh, commercial and culture. So with that, they really focused in on making sure that as we look at the government complex here, that it was the home to all of the uh, different branches of the government. The uh, legislative branch, the judicial branch, uh, as well as the executive branch. And to incorporate that into one um, consolidated center. They also stated that it was important that we create a legislative center that was consolidated. Um, work closely with all of you, understand what you would like, and to achieve your goals and your objectives. Uh, to relocate the government of Guam agencies, the key government of Guam agencies within the government center here as well. Um, to take into consideration the judicial plan that they have put so much time and effort into, and uh, marry all of those through the fabric of, uh, of Hagatnya. Looking at, uh, we've heard to relocate the detention facility and uh, some of the important components, the assets to make sure all of this works is uh, vehicular transportation, pedestrian trans transportation, transit, incorporating transit and making sure all the connectivity at all of those levels is integrated throughout the plan. Some of the issues that were addressed is uh, safety, to make sure that we improve the safety within Hagatnya. Um, the nightlife, uh, to enhance the nightlife, bring more people into the community here, not just during the day, but at night, but through the people who work in the community, but bringing more residents within the community. Um, address some of the issues of homelessness, uh, the homeless that are within the area, we have abandoned buildings, work with the property owners, look for avenues and grants to, to improve in, um, in those areas, and overall long-term maintenance and upkeep. And once again, we're gonna restress the importance of sustain sustainability, making sure we have the financial um, foundation to continue to implement and sustain the plan. The other areas that we heard on the opportunity side of the house is there's many opportunities. Um, the Hagatnya River, use that as an amenity to enhance commercial, retail, tourism, um, and development along the river. Uh, the opportunity to promote and enhance the Chamorro culture and bringing in the Chamorro village all the way through with the Heritage Trail and other opportunities along with the, the new Guam Museum that is coming along very well. Um, looking at expanding revitalizing the shoreline. They looked at that as a, as a great opportunity. Connectivity from Adaloupe to the Paseo all the way to, uh, to Mooning Village. And, and the key is not just to look at Hagania. There's five different villages that hug around Hagania. We have to make sure there's good transition and that there's a benefit of quality of life improvement for all. Um, and they stated the opportunities to, for tourism are here and the opportunities for branding and providing more identity for Gatnia. And there was many more opportunities that were identified. So as we go forward and we look to all of you for input, there's five different districts that we have um, identified within the overall Hagatnya to break it down for more uh, easier uh, focus. And you'll see here we have the waterfront district, which is along the, uh, the ocean. We have a mixed-use residential area. Let me get my mixed-use residential district right here. So uh, it, what that means is the majority of that land would be focused on residential with some mixed-use in it, but the majority of it would be residential. The red, you'll see, is also mixed-use, but the prominent use in that area would be commercial retail and tourism. Um, in the center and the heart is the capital and cultural district and then surrounded to the, to the right here is the Higatnia River District. And we'll go into more detail, more focus as we move forward. 
So as I stated earlier, the participants of the two-day workshop provided us high-level um, ideas for the entire village. As you'll see here, they talked about areas for transit, internal transit systems, external transit areas, um, the shoreline walk for the connectivity, uh, in expansion of the Chamorro, the cent cent Central Park area, enhancement there, uh, residential redevelopment along the area in here for commercial. The list goes on. This was just one of the um, concepts. There were three different concepts, three different groups that provided input. The, um, the important part, though, is to right now focus in on the Capital Cultural District. And why? Why is that important? Because a lot is happening right now. There is a lot of capital investment going forward and uh, assets that are moving and actually from dirt to ground to construction and up. So it's important to make sure that before that gets ahead of what we're all thinking as far as a plan, we like to focus in on that area. So what we thought would be important is to utilize one of our 3D um, tools. Um, a lot of people had helped to visualize what, uh, what was being put down as concepts on plan, on the plans during the workshop. So you'll see here that we went forward and we developed a 3D um, visual of what is the existing Hayatnya today. And it gives you some of the landmarks. We have the post office, the proposed um, Guam Museum as it's being constructed today, Plaza de España, um, the Congress, the uh, Legislative Congress Session Hall, and the proposed expansion that the legis legislature is going forward with. And then what we did is there were two concepts that came out of the two-day uh, two workshop that we'll go into a little bit more detail that focused in on the Capital and Cultural Districts. As you'll see here, this is one of them. So this is the two-dimensional plan that they came up with. You'll see that there's a strong pedestrian spine here connecting the Paseo, the Chamorro Village, all the way through to the museum in Lade Park. Um, you'll see that the, we have the river right here as far as a point of reference. So this is what we're focusing in on here. If we move on to the next slide, we took what their concept was and uh, provided more of a visual, 3D visual. Why? It provides you um, a scale, a sense of mass, a sense of integration, and what will it look like if you're really walking through it. So you'll see that the buildings that are in purple, or the areas that are in purple, are areas that are, were proposed by one of the groups that were part of developing the concepts and their vision and their ideas. And to give you an idea, or to give you an overview of what this concept was, I looked at a parking structure. Here, a two-story parking structure with approximately 300 parking spaces provided. This parking structure would not only provide parking to the government offices, the legislat legislature offices, but also shared parking with the academy, the church, and other um, key landmarks within the uh, center capital and cultural district of Hagatnya. We also, uh, they also um, proposed uh, re uh, reconstructing the Palacio and uh, providing new administrative buildings for the government here. These two buildings come up to approximately 100,000 square feet of additional administrative um, office space. Now, understand that when we're giving you these square footages and these ideas of, of spaces, they're concepts from one of the groups of participants at the workshop. But we were able to provide the visual um, 3D uh, plan of it. There's also additional parking behind here. This is surface parking. Um, through our measurements, it was approximately, I believe, an additional 200 plus or minus uh, spaces that uh, would support the administrative buildings here. Ultimately, you can look at the surface parking area. Um, as they stated, that they would thought that maybe that would be a great location for additional administrative and retail mixed use area with parking on the first floor. So, you know, there's a lot of different ideas that were uh, discussed during the concept. And then moving on in this area here, 
They looked at the importance of consolidating all of the legislative our legislature, the senator's offices, very close to the Congress session hall and the new offices, new five offices that are being, um, or that will be constructed here shortly. And they were proposing a three-story facility or building right here. First floor being a, um, a parking structure or, or parking spaces. And then it's the second and third floor would be the offices of other senators in the legis legislature probably approximately 18,000 square feet, those two offices. Another idea that was discussed during that concept was maybe not even putting um, parking on that first floor, putting three floors of um, either office space and maybe retail on the bottom, an opportunity for revenue generating um, uh, opportunities for the legislature. So looking at where you can continue to, to sustain financially as well. Very, very important for um, looking at all of those different options. So the second group, and you'll see this is the second group's um, conceptual design as they took pen to paper and pencil to paper here. Um, and I'm going to focus mostly in the capital cultural district here. Um, they looked and they focused in, in this area more than the, the area here. And if we go to the next, just to get to it here. Um, so the parking that currently exists where you just saw where group one, their concept was a parking structure, this group stated that they thought it would be good just to continue keeping surface parking in that area. But ultimately, um, adding or adding, um, constructing the Palacio as it used to stand. And then two new buildings here uh, that uh, one would be for administrative space and another one would be for parking. In this specific design or concept that they were talking about, in a little bit less administrative building, it was closer to, I wanna say 58,000 square feet of administrative space here with um, Approximately, I can't remember how many, Rick, do you remember how many parking spaces in this one? Just so they could have a comparison, I think it's good. Just so everybody knows, the Palacio is about 9,900 square feet and it would be reconstructed exactly how it stood. Okay, and so the parking structure, uh, the number of spaces would be 285 spaces in this area. Um, maintain what is being proposed and constructed here shortly. Uh, with the Congress Session Hall expansion. But in this area, this group um, was proposing additional legislative offices uh, either on the second and third floor above the post office or in a building, a four-story building um, adjacent to the office, or to the post office, excuse me. So they were looking at utilizing this space more than utilizing this space, which is good because that's why we have different groups providing different ideas and different concepts. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what was discussed during those two, um, two days and from the people who participated. Um, transit so, was- Ms. Werner, could yes. you identify uh, those groups and who are those individuals that made up those groups? We can. You mentioned there are three separate groups, right? There were three separate groups, but two groups were the groups that focused in only on the capital um, cultural district. Were these members of the public or members? Many of, the of them were members of the public. We had representatives from Gov Guam. Um, we had business owners. We had um, property owners who just who were residents within the area. Okay. And if just Rick, so I can put could, things into the proper context of yes, I think that's important. Are, we yeah. actually have some backup information here, just in case you want to get you have, want to have a little bit more information. So, all in all, we had 35 individuals who have participated. You'll see uh, their names here. Um, we invited over 150 invitations went out. Many of those invitations were not to individual people, but to agencies or organizations that are very involved within the community here. And then um, we also have, we invited the one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews that we held. We 
invited 70, I believe, 78 different uh, people to be part of the one-on-one -on -one interviews, and we had a great success there. I believe it was 50, 55 individuals that we um, we interviewed, and you'll see um, their list right of uh, the individuals right here. Just for yes. for cl clarity. Yes. If you go back to that list. Yes. I know you listed myself and Senator James S. Baldone. And I think you probably should clarify what Senator James and I both stated at that time. I, that's a good point. We did not want to participate in the discussion unless we had been provided with some background information. We were not going to participate in a cold discussion and we're still being listed as having been a participants attendees yes sir but i will i would love to have that yeah I, I think you should probably get that clear because if you go through the list between the five of you could you tell me who were some of the longest standing residents of the city of Haganya that li continued to live in Aganya into this into the 70s the 80s and into the 90s did you speak to any of those families? Tria, would you like to? <clears throat> um, for the stakeholder interviews, um, we did reach out um, to property owners. Um, I do have a list. We have the Pangilinan from MVP Enterprises. We did interview Mr. John Pangilinan. His father didn't attend the interview. Um, the Joneses, which was J&G and Triple J. Um, so we spoke with Juan Carlos Benitez, Ramona Jones, Bob Jones, Jeff Jones, Dan Mural. Um, business owners, Proa, Joffrey Perez, and Chris Bajado. IDI, they're not a property owner, um, but they are a distribution company. We spoke with Shauna Guzman. Um, we spoke with the cruise ship, um, Louis Ajamil. I t and we did send out um, requests to ITE overseas, the Bor John Borja, John Borles, Guam Autospot, DNA Incorporated, um, which was David Lujan, Marianne Lujan. Um, ben Luhan towing, but none of those property owners accepted the invitation for the interview. Did you talk to any of the people that had lived in the Ganyu? Do, do any of you know? I mean, you're much too young to have known. <laughs> like, behind us, Mrs. Frankis has almost lived continuously in the Ganya. I mean, she tore down her apartment and built up another one. Um, the, the Jose's but even more than that, um, where the Serena building is, the, the Underwoods lived in the Ganya, and I, if memory serves me right, they were, they were still here into the late 80s. Did anybody speak to anybody from the Underwoods? Well, if we could clarify, um, we had, as earlier stated in the presentation, the, our outreach is twofold. So we, our first set was to interview the stakeholders. So it was business owners, land, I mean, not specific. See, but the problem that you're having is you're, you're dealing with current landowners. Auto spot, they've only recently moved into that building. Correct. Did you talk to the Palomos that own that property before them? Serena building was Underwoods. Did you talk to the Underwoods before them, you know? Did my family had all the property where the Cowboy offices are now? Ben Bloss's family behind us. You should have spoken to if you're talking about restoring Hagatnya to what Hagatnya was before the war and immediately after the war. Did you talk to any of the families that lived in Hagatnya during that period? It doesn't sound like it. Well, we still have the opportunity, Senator, to continue. I, I understand, but what I'm saying is that, no offense, 
bringing in somebody from outside who doesn't know who lived in the Ganya, or having someone too young to have grown up and seen the Ganya before it was taken over, you lose it. Um, and I think the important part, and I, I know Joseph and I had talked about this before, is to get all the list of Haganya family owners in the capital district to talk about what was the, what the capital district looked like. The Martinez families, I'm looking up there, they own practically everything that's across the street from here. The Butler family still owns the property underneath this property. It just undermines the credibility of this whole study when you guys aren't, are dealing, oh yeah, it's great. Interview Peter Wang maybe because he's the leaseholder of this property, but get the people that owned the, that lived here, had the building that was the, the butler store here. Speaker, uh, certainly uh, some of the those people that you mentioned were on the list, and, and unfortunately, uh, at this first pass, uh, uh, you know, we, we didn't get full uh, what do you call it, participation. And we certainly will make efforts to uh, to uh, pursue that, and 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 that's uh, uh, like uh, Celeste mentioned. This is this is uh, the dynamic of this uh, master plan is that it, it, we we are work in progress, and and, and we will continue to pursue. Uh, I understand that, Mr. Chairman, but you're already saying you're moving into the second and the third box right now, if, if memory serves me right at the beginning of this presentation. And I'm saying you need to talk to the families that lived here. The mm -hmm. Martinez's, for Christ's sake, they, the, the power plant was here and so was the ice plant. If you're going to restore Hagatnia, understand what Hagatnia was. I understand. Those of you that never even lived here are trying to design the city for us. Talk to the people that lived here. Can you go back to that slide um, where you talked about the timelines? The second box that the vice speaker uh, pointed out and just clarify. Oh, you need to use the microphone, oh. ma'am, because the sorry. following on. I'm sorry. So we're right in here. We're in early 2015, mid-2015. So we're still in the discovery. We're in the early stages. And um, we respect and your, your comment, and we'll continue to do our very best to invite them and hope that they participate. And we've been working very closely with the HRRA members, um, their staff, the subcommittee, uh, who've been here for many, 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 many years, and um, we've we've worked here for six years, and very, believe me, we're we're here half of our lives. So we may not live here all the time, but we've come to love this place, so be so part maybe of the community. To, to further the vice speaker's suggestion, you did ask for input, and I'm glad yes. that you're receiving it very well. Under the first box, you should add another bullet point, and uh, maybe you might call it. Um, interview with uh, original families or whatever you want we'll to label that. We'll be happy to do that. So the recognition is that you're going to reach out to those long-term, uh, long-time residents that were part of the Hagatnya village. They may not yes. be living here, but they certainly um, have grown up here and right. have a- Their roots. Yeah. And I appreciate so. that suggestion, Mr. Chairman, yeah. but I'm saying they stated, I'm not stating it, they stated they were already in mid-2015 with the alternative developments. And they've shown us alternative developments. So they've, they've clearly moved past the first box. No, they're not. They haven't. Because she said the plan is evolving. So even when it does come before the legislature, you might make some amendments to the plan that will change it entirely. So. And so go back. Okay, Just go you're going to put yeah, a bullet point yeah, on the first Yes, Chairman. Even even within the, those two options, you know, they're 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 interchangeable. I mean, uh, the buildings can be, depending on on, on what uh, you know uh, options we have or, or suggestions we have in the future, which would include now uh, we'll, we'll make an attempt to include the the original uh, landowners at Aganya, and uh, and we won't leave them out. But 
Uh, yeah, because I, I also want to point out that it's, but it's been, not too late. Yeah. But it's been uh, Chairman Cabo's position and the HRA Commission that uh, you would reach out to the family so that if there are any issues with uh, land use or zoning or you want to resolve all those things before it gets right. to the legislature, we don't want to be the body to provide any kind of remedy to those families that would have to have their properties conform to this plan. You remember we said that, that the community would drive this. So the next time we see you, that thing will be revised, revised, right? And I think that bullet will remain all the way through because you always want to get their input. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank Definitely. You, Mr. And and, and, uh, and Chairman, we, we would uh, make sure to adopt that in our next meeting uh, as uh, as policy within the uh, within the board. And also, there's uh, Dr. Cruz, Dr. O. C. Cruz, and her family still living in Agaña. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I want to recognize Senator Barnes, too. Uh, yeah, if, if, Mr. Chair, we can add, uh, I didn't hear names like the Salases, uh, the Limchialcos that live, uh, the Sandy Limchialco family, uh, the Shimizus, the uh, Ilagans that are all within that area, right? right yes, right uh, some of those, yeah. Senator, some of those names were on the list, but unfortunately uh, they, they did not, uh, they chose not to be interviewed. And uh, you know some of the names that you had mentioned uh, were not, but but, but some of them family. that you had <laughs> were also on the list. And and but we'll make uh, you know additional efforts to try to contact them again. And some of them, some of them are so young that they weren't part of Agatnya when they were growing up, and the ones that are unfortunately are dying off. And so I'm just saying there are some who have great knowledge of what Hagatnya was about. Mrs. Frankis, Mrs. Rosemary Underwood, um, they lived right there. You know, maybe talking to Jerry, who might not have been here when, but Mrs. Frankis and Rosemary can probably describe the store that was here. If this is Hagatnya restoration, I mean, if, if you guys are just going to try to do what the military tried to do and make this be Santa Monica, all right, fine. Then go ahead. But if you're going to try to try to capture the flavor, then know who was here. And there are still Martinez's, all those nuns. That are still alive that grew up in the homes right here. Okay, I didn't think my questioning, <laughs> my asking who these groups are would have, um, but it did generate some good suggestions, I agree. Yeah, you can go fast Thank forward. Thank you. That was the end of our presentation, Chairman. At the end of your presentation, <laughs> <laughs> we're Problem hoping solved. to hear from all of you as far as what your vision, what your you know dream is, as far as bringing back um, the historic culture and of Hagatnya. Uh, Mr. Vice Speaker, I have a couple of questions. I I noticed that in one of your bullet points, it's the relocation of the Hagatnya Detention Center. That was one of the, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yes, Vice Speaker. That, what, the one thing I'd like to clarify is everything that we presented to you this evening is not the thoughts or recommendations of Matrix Design Group or HRRA proper. Those are not even land use alternatives yet. It's just part of our early stages of discovery and understanding through the participants who have been involved, what their thoughts were, what their concepts were. And so please, we do not want you to think that this, we've jumped ahead to land use alternatives, not listening and hearing all of your very important points and thoughts and visions of, of what you would like to see. Maybe so. you haven't. But 
your suggestions and those two alternatives are being taken as what's going to replace the Manuel F. Guerrero building with the dem demolition. Okay, okay, well then, I need to clarify it again because that truly is not our recommendations and I apologize if I misspoke and, and that was not the truth. So the, the bottom line is those are concepts from people that we heard. We're just representing and presenting to you what we have heard through our discovery process. And in no way did we guide them to provide us what those are there. We were observers and listeners and documenting what we heard. And did you guys do any research on, like with the relocation of the Haganya de detention? I mean, I would love to have it out of Haganya, okay? I mean, in the same way that I was pushing the Palazzo before she was born in, in 78 when I was working for Ricky. So I'm in favor of the rebuilding of the Palazzo okay. on its original footprint. But did anybody do the research of what would happen with the relocation of the federal detention facility that the federal government built for the government of Guam in the city of Agatanya? Uh, Vice Speaker, we're looking to the legislature to make that decision and to provide Not guidance. the decision, but I'm saying, oh, I'm sorry. as consultants, should you not have done the research to determine what would happen, what would the liability to the government of Guam be if we destroyed a federally funded building for the detention center? Okay, let me recognize uh, Mr. Cameron. Just state your name. Thank and you. Your I'm title. Joseph Artero Cameron. I'm the president of Chamorro Affairs. And I'm also, uh, for the past six years, director of the Hagatni Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. Uh, Vice Speaker, do realize that this particular plan is a dynamic plan. And this plan does not stipulate it in any shape, form, or fashion finality during this one hour to two hours we're going to be here. I understand where you're going with this, but we've also had very many discussions about the very things you've discussed uh, specifically when it's been federally funded, that particular detention facility. But I, I clearly will say, as the director of Agania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, that if I were to come to a rich historic district, I would certainly not want to invite the people from outside of Guam to a penal colony area where people are being held for, for things that they did wrong to this community. I, I do not support having a jail or a prison in my backyard in a rich historic district of Agatnia. I clearly would not Joseph, recommend that. Joseph, did you hear my My, my, my answer to you, to Vice Speaker, is that there will come a time when we move forward with this plan that there will be tangible responses to any potential concerns that deal with the legality and any reimbursements to the federal government or any partnerships with the federal government for another area for that particular jail. But this is something that we need to discuss very seriously. I agree with you. I yes. started my whole thing mm -hmm. with, I would love to see the detention center out of the city. Okay? And as we move and forward, we saying, will address your concerns that deal specifically with the legal matters that we and the federal government must sit down at the table. We're not at that point yet. But, but, not but only we for are that. at the point of saying we're going to demolish the building because we're going to either have two parallel buildings, at least in, in one alternative, or a, a rebuild of the L design, but pushed over uh, above the department. Conceptualizing and any type of master planning, it starts with that. And you need to start somewhere on conceptualizing what is potentially uh, the best practical use for land use in that general area. And what do you want to really see in the footprint? We are saying that there is going to be a lot more discussion as to how this footprint will evolve. And uh, I can't really answer everything you're saying right now because we're still evolving. 
But I think also you answered the vice speaker's question that any time the plan is ready to be presented to the legislature, you would have vetted all those issues. You yes, and uh, that was one of the things that we yeah. discussed very closely. Yeah, and you know, coming to the table here tonight uh, was a status update of some of the things that have since occurred in our meetings and in our opportunities that we've called in certain people. You know, there's that expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Unfortunately, we've not had some participation from the community, um, and we will have due diligence to make sure that the, uh, we bring them to the table. But the relocation of the detention facility has been publicly talked about for quite some time now. Many years now. To give you a good example, and I know because I worked in, in, the, in the federal area, and uh, there's been many issues that have dealt with why it is where it is today, and you know, this is not the venue to talk about the, the laundry, the, the dirty laundry of what happened between the two governments. But nonetheless, uh, in the footprint moving forward, uh, I can tell you as the director of Forgotten Restoration, for the past six years I've always thought that uh, that, be, that particular activity in Agania is inappropriate. Okay, no, let me... I, and I fully agree with you, Joseph. I'm just saying we need to know the cost. Yes. Because I was not the one that presented to, uh, to last week. Joseph was the one that walked around and gave us that little mm -hmm. conceptual plan of the first one. Yeah, all right? And I'm just saying, we're, we're talking, it was being offered as what was going to happen once we took to demolished the current building there. As I said, uh, there, there. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Let me recognize your chairman. Oh, you. He's been uh, asking to speak. Yes, uh, just a comment. I, I think regarding the that handout that we had at the, that last roundtable, uh, that was I, I clarified that that was a sort of a preview to this uh, to this presentation. We, you know, we obviously didn't want to present it um, earlier than 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 uh, than, than uh, today, but. Uh, we thought it would hopefully explain our, our position, but I think that the train of thought that I think came about in, 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 in laying out the project is that, and it goes back to what I mentioned, is we want to present the best and highest use possible with the limited space we have. And, and so, you know, we, we looked at, uh, and, and we, we want to make sure that that incorporates, you know, the ideas of, of, of uh, or the input from everybody. And so we, we, you know, so we came up with, with that layout based on best use. And, and without, and, and that's basically, we, we don't want to shortchange people at Guam. We, we want to make sure that, that you know, that we, we, we've taken all that into account. And so, am I to take it so that it's, it's very clear that those are conceptual plans that have not been adopted or approved, and so therefore, am I to take it to mean that demolishing the building that there is no current approved plan for its replacement I can answer that back in 2009 when I first became director of forgotten your restoration and redevelopment authority that was one of the things that was of great concern. And, and the legislature realizes this for years. This is a property of the Guam legislature. There were people in that building. So they, the practicality of moving people out uh, who were on, in those buildings doing business as Gov Guam did not have a place that they could alternatively move to. So they sort of like just vegetated there, and the conditions of the building continued to be grossly inadequate, um, even to the extent that they had to move out. And so now, here we are. We are revisiting many years of discussion about what is to happen to that DOA building. It's time for it to be demolished, Senator. Okay. It's time. All right. We can't belabor this. But, but yes, we can. Because do you have concrete plans for what you're going to do when you take it down? Well, at first, we got to remove the blight, and we got to make sure that as we move forward, the, the plans of our government needs to see what we would be putting on it at first, at first sight. We, and we, were we, here have, we have a meetings. building currently that two 
engineers have said ha are not suffering from structural deficiencies. Some other issues, um, cosmetic maybe, yes, plenty, mm -hmm. plenty. But we have a building that's structurally sound and we're going to demolish it without anything that we can say we're going to replace it with. And if we did, trying to decide how we're going to afford to do that. Right now we know that renovations of the current building would run 17 to 25 million. Do we have any estimates of what the, the demolition of the rest of Agania is going to be to do, to do all the rest of those things that, that are, are planned there and, and construct those additional structures? And for that do we reason, have any, uh, do we? Mr. Mr. Vice Speaker, in redeveloping a city, and we've seen this throughout the United States, it cannot be conceptualized in, in such a fashion that, you know, you already know that uh, two years from now, it's gonna, it's, that's going to be gone, or this is not going to be here. It takes a community to build this consensus, and this government both the legislative and the executive branch and the judicial who have a vested interest in this entire historic district of Agania needs to come together. And we're hoping that this venue would create that versus uh, you know, any type of negativism. Uh, as I see it, I, I believe that uh, we would be reasonable people to come to the table and look at every opportunity that's available to this beautiful city of Agania. And I think the people of Guam will realize that this, this is true. Bunitus din lugar. No necesario na todi tauto ni mangay gigi ilislatura gigi para igubet namento dyan edusya ihuest dyan i abugaw siya ni mangay gigi yuzon upan halum kon todo i familia siya sa umatungo hafan malolofan esti na 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 presentasyon para una tungo todi tauto hafan malolofan zataza manazan trebia sa esti na plano ti manahazan Logabi Sangani Hamzulokwi, Megge na planu ni sesum and matogwigini, a lot of plans. How many plans have we seen throughout this government and other state governments that just shelved? I, the intent of the Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority is not to shelve it. It is a living document and we want you to help us make it alive. And I, but we do thank you for your input, most definitely, and we will do diligence to make sure but that isn't your the, concerns isn't are... But isn't the shorter answer, yes, there is a plan, and the governor talked about the Palacio, and he, yes. and he talked about mm -hmm. that the demolition of the DOA, the mm -hmm. building, the Governor Guerrero Correct. building, is necessary so we can make these incremental steps yes. toward achieving that yes. plan. Yes, and, and, and I support the, that. Because the Vice Speaker's question was, why demolish the building now if there's no plan to replace it? But so. even we've pointed out several times with a, with a volume, a book that was published about the Palazzo, that the Palazzo could be reconstructed in its, or on its original footprint without touching either one of the other two buildings. I also know for a fact that uh, if you look at the, the historical background of the DOA building, it was nothing more than a barracks-shaped building. And there's a lot of documents that, that show this. At, and I went there today to look at all these pictures uh, going dating back to how that, that barracks-shaped building was built. The architectural design does not foot, fit the footprint. I mean, Zangim Paron Onra i i i di punto magalahi Manuel Guerrero na i mas bonito na lugar ni Paul Mapega na anya. Not all uh, registries require that it's a building. It's also on a site that is very historic, and there's ways to to catapult that site to be historic still. So yeah, my my recommendation is. To, uh, to look at it as a site that is very historical, not necessarily the blight building I see right now that's a barracks. But also to recognize the cost to bring the building up Definitely. to code. And the lifespan of that. to 25 million and the mm -hmm. lifespan only yeah. being a decade. So, I mean, those are points that we have to keep Correct. on the table so that mm -hmm. there's, you know, that that's what you have to weigh. Are you, yes. Is this community willing to spend the millions of dollars it's gonna take to bring that building to code and have it for a shorter lifespan than to 
reconstruct from the ground up, and that's the, that's the decision that weighs heavy on this legislature at this point. You know, and, and to coin the phrase, you know, we can't be penny wise and dollar foolish. So we've got to do some, some good planning, and I, I believe that Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority has moved forward in that direction, that it would do some really great planning uh, with public participation, especially uh, with the legislature owning a great many of the properties that are currently in this fabric. Thank you. Now, I also wanted to bring up, you did ask for input. I, early on in this process, um, if their suggestion is the highest and best use of the surrounding uh, properties, you know, my concern was we, I don't think we can do this um, legally to dumb down any current zoning. So you have some areas that are light industrial, you have some areas that are commercial, residential. Could you give me some feedback right now for the record how it is you are going to address those areas uh, without dumbing down any current activity in those areas? Because I don't want the surrounding property owners to be alarmed and say, so I, I'm going to be negatively impacted by this uh, action of the government where the same government said I can have this activity because my property was zoned correctly. Could you just speak to that? So, Yes, Chairman. Um, when looking at and moving forward with zoning, uh, the first and foremost is property rights. Um, whenever any entity goes forward with rezoning, uh, the most important part is there's no taking. You can always go up, but you can never go down. Correct. Okay. And in many cases, the decision may be that they're, they're grandfathered in, and they may look at a repurposing through rezoning, but never take away what currently exists today. So it is definitely a delicate um, task that we have, um, that you, we all have as we move forward. Um, but the key is, is to make sure you have some regulatory framework uh, or regulatory tools to implement the land use plan. Or again, you will have a plan that is just shelved. Yeah, and just so we understand the magnitude of moving this plan forward, absent the financial requirements to do it, there are some properties that there's encroachment issues, there's um, title issues, there's, could you just speak to that? Because those are things that we talk about in our, in our board meetings, yeah. One of the things that comes to, to my forefront of my mind was that, you know, although the, the, the law that, the statutory uh, allowances of the law for Haganya Restoration Redevelopment Authority, clearly we were not looking at condemnation right up front. We made that very clear from day one when this board uh, c was created or recreate or appointed that uh, we're not really interested in looking right up to the front of condemnation of properties. We never looked at it that way. Okay, and that's, that's what I said, that all of those uh, issues will be resolved hopefully before coming to the legislature I'm, as part of this process. But there's also some properties that don't have the required uh, setbacks and things like that. So there's some discussions that you've been involved in with these property owners to have them do landscaping or something, right, to incorporate those walkways. And I just want, I just want everybody to appreciate the magnitude of uh, and all the sensitivities of all these um, things that are, that are before us. It's not easy whenever you deal with land, you know that. Um. Yes, sir. You're, you are correct. Um, and this is an extremely complex project uh, because of all the different issues that need to be addressed to make sure we're sensitive and we respect the rights of the property owners and, and what is currently has been there. It's going to come down to this. It's going to come down to choices and consequences. There's a choice for every situation. And no matter what anybody says, there's going to be a consequence. There's always a negative and a positive cons consequence for each one of the choices. But it's going, to be, it's going to be the decision of all of you, HRRA, to move forward. And what we're going to do as, as the experts is provide you the tools of the different uh, methods that you can use to address each one of those. But I will tell you this, each, each um, specific property needs to be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. You can't just do a whitewash across the board. And um, um, this project that we're currently 
our deliverables that we're going to be providing you is we're going to be providing you what are those um, different tools that you can use for each one. But then there's a lot of work afterwards that as you go forward and you meet with each property owner and you prioritize those areas that you want to focus in on. As we are stating, we believe that it's very critical and I believe all of you believe it's important to look at the Capital Cultural District. The Fest Pack is coming here shortly in 2016. We want this to be a celebration of the culture, of, of people of Guam, of the area, and uh, what a great opportunity to to start to make that happen. And does one of your deliverables include the recommendations of some financing uh, options? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, that is a specific component of it. So we're going to be looking at uh, opportunities through grants, the different grants, um, opportunities through fiscal financing methods that the HRRA has the authority to um, execute uh, as they move forward uh, because you have to have revenue Gen continuous revenue generated. So it's important when you go forward with plans like this is to find a win-win-win. A win for HRRA, a win for the property owners, a, a win for the people of Guam, um, and a win for the legislature who is also a key property owner here within the Capital Cultural District. So there are a lot of different entities and stakeholders that we need to try to balance. And as it relates to the building that's currently there, I think if you ask your neighbor in your building, your landlord, how much was spent to renovate some barracks, real barracks, and then sell it to the government for a couple of hundred million dollars, you'll find that the, the 15, 17 to 25 million that um, is supposedly the cost of renovating this current structurally sound building would would be a, a good investment and that ought to be looked at it you won't have too far to, to walk to talk to them about how much they spent you don't need to tell us how much they spent so you don't we don't need to know how much we <laughs> <laughs> we got taken on it uh, because we paid a couple of hundred million for it. But you can find out how much was spent to renovate buildings that were in worse condition, worse condition than the current bill, the, the, this current building. And we have no problems with renovations there. Today we were just at. <clears throat> Guam Memorial Hospital for a presentation of what we were, what's going to be a either seven to a twelve million dollar renovation of the labor and delivery ward. And last year they just finished the emergency room and the upgrade of the urgent care center. And today the acting administrator hinted that his next move was to finish the renovations on the second floor by asking for money to do a um, renovation of the operating room. And we had a hearing here this last September where, where when we were talking about the renovations to the labor and delivery room where the hospital told us that they needed $43 million, $43 million for the capital improvements of the hospital. Thankfully, whoever, was in, whoever suggested the, the demolition of this building wasn't in charge of making the decision on the hospital because otherwise it would be demolished with them asking for $43 million for their capital improvements. But we're making the capital improvements and it is becoming a, a hospital befitting of a community in the 21st century by small, little investments. 12 million here, 7 million there, 10 million here. And it didn't need to be demolished to build a three or four hundred million dollar structure. Because I don't know where that money is going to come from. As creative as you can be, it still has to be repaid. Okay. 
you know, we get to have this discussion uh, all over again tomorrow <laughs> while we're in session, but I want to recognize any other senator who has any questions or comments. Okay, if not, um, on behalf of the committee, on behalf of myself, thank you for your presentations, and I'm sure you're open to having regular um, status uh, updates with the legislature so we could see where you're at, and then we can give you the input that you're requesting. And so stay tuned, because tomorrow we have session and we have some other important decisions to make. So, but if there's nothing further. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.